looking for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing, I know that all things are working for my good, yeah. Tonight, because I understand that sometimes um, there are things that we put to the side of our hearts and we say, God, you can have everything else, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to touch this. Yes. You know, it's not now, Lord. I really want you to fix me, God. I want to I want to be a better person, God. I, I want to be uh, closer to you. But God, this, this, can you leave this right here alone? You know, just, just leave this right here alone and, and, and take everything else. But, but this right here... Ah, leave it, please, in Jesus' name. And so my topic tonight is called self-deception. Self-deception is one thing to deceive someone else and pretend to be something that you're not so that you can win over the affection, the attention, the, the desires of somebody else. And it's a whole another another situation when you're deceiving yourself. Um, I'm reminded of a, one of my favorite movies that is just so hilarious. I'm going to get you sucker. It's an old, old movie. Yes. And it's a part in this movie that is so hilarious to me, but it made me really think. When, when, when Keenan Wayne was in, in the uh, uh, club and he saw that girl in the red jacket and then he looked at me and he said, oh, she's fine. And she had bam, bam, thank you, ma'am, all the right places. She, right, right. she had a clean going on and he was grinning and skin like, yeah, baby, I'm going to check her back. He was excited about this woman because of the deception that she had played. And she was this gorgeous woman. And they get back, long story short, and Keenan says, you know, I got to, um, you know, admit, you know, what I said to you about, you know, you know what he said. Uh-huh, I lied. You know, we got to keep it clean. We have children in here. And so um, she said, oh, I'm so glad we're being free. Oh, praise Jesus. You know, so you see these green eyes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they're not green. She took things off. Mean, mean as I don't know what, muggy boo. You don't need to 
should be standing at the door. We need friendly people that have a personality that love people to be the go the doorkeepers like Tamika at the house of the Lord. You got to understand where your gift lies and operate and function in it into the best of your abilities. Stop flattering yourself thinking that you can do something that you're not gifted to do. I cannot stand when people take the word of God out of context. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yes, who you can, but you can't see. <laughs> yeah. Operate in the gifting and the calling that God yes. gave you yes. and do it to the best of your ability as unto the Lord and stop flattering yourself and deceiving yourself that you can function in ways that you cannot. Oh, God. Let's go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verses 33 through 35 says, Peter replied to him, Though they all fall away because of you and doubt and disown you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, This night before a rooster crows, you will completely deny me three times. And Peter said to Jesus, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. How many of us fall in this category? Boo, me and you, we tight, Lord. You know me, I'm your dog. You know, I ain't gonna never turn my back. Now them, them over there, them, they, they'll disown you, but not me, Lord, because me and you, we tight. That's what Peter said. He said, though they, they might fall, but I'm not. We're quick to point our fingers and, and dictate what somebody else will do and always will say that we're not in that boat, but guess what? Sometimes our flaws are just as bad as the other people that we point that come all day. All right. Uh, just to, just to, to, to piggyback on that, 1 John 1 and 8 says, If we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude ourselves and the truth is not in us. His word does not live in our hearts. It, it, it trips me out. I have this girl that calls me. I'm not going to call her my friend, but she's not. But this individual that calls me, and, and I'm just going to give you an example of how the conversation goes, and I'm exaggerating it because I want y'all to get the point of what I'm saying. She'll say, girl, let me tell you, did you know that Susie Strawberry and her husband just got evicted again? Yeah, child, that car got repossessed too. Child, oh, let me tell you. Oh, my God, a starburst came, girl, and her daughter is pregnant again. Yeah, child, it's the third child she done had out of wedlock. Still ain't got no husband. Oh, Lord, girl. Like, oh, let me tell you. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Did I tell you that Johnny? Girl, I saw him stepping out on his wife again. Yeah, uh -huh, girl. Did she think she got it going on? But I know her husband cheating on her. Child, I'm going to pray for all of them because they got issues. I'm so glad that I don't fall in them category, girl. girl. They need pray. I'm going to pray for them. Um, look, you're the biggest gossiper in the world. Have you not noticed that your sin is just as bad as everybody else's that you've mentioned and made sure that you emphasize so that it made yourself look better? How many people are like that where they want to point out everybody else's flaw so that they can look better themselves and not have to deal with the man in the mirror and their own issues that they got going on? Because, you know, my issue's not that bad. Your issue is way worse than mine can ever be. It's called self-deception. Let's move a little further. Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Verse 31 through 32 says, The ear that listens to and learns from the life-giving rebuke, reprimand, censure, will remain among the wise. But he who neglects and ignores instruction and discipline despises himself. But he who learns from rebuke acquires understanding and grows in wisdom. Now, now, this is right here, you, you know, I, let, let's just be real for just a moment. When I was in retail management, one of the hardest things I had to do was write the annual reviews for my employees. And I'm the type of person, I would give them three or four or five things about them that I think is excellent. That these are your strong suits. These are some things that, that, that you're really doing well. And then after I go and I give them all the strong suits and everything they're doing well, I have to then let them know of the reprimand the things that they need to work on, the things that they need to enhance so that they can get a better raise next year. And it never fails that when you get to that point where you're getting ready to recommend someone, they don't hear nothing else that you just said. All they hear is the review. They don't receive what you said because, you know, I'm not as bad as you're trying to make it seem. And why she dumping on me and uh, she is tripping because I'm really not like that. And, and they go on and on and on and they miss an opportunity to, to, to change whatever was wrong. They missed an opportunity to fix what was wrong so that they can then have a better way of life. So you've got to understand that, that, that when somebody is rebuking you in love, it is a life-giving opportunity for you to fix something that's broke. Yes. 
Don't you understand that none of us are perfect? None of us have, have arrived to this place of maturity where we have nothing wrong in our lives. And if somebody points to us something that we're doing that's annoying or causing someone to fall away from the body of Christ, then we need to listen and respond. Life-giving review. That reprimand that is given, that wisdom that's given to help you, not hurt you. To make you better, not make you worse. To make you stronger, not destroy you. And sometimes we can get so defensive and so angry that we miss an opportunity to fix something. Don't you understand that even with plants, when, when, when plants are growing, they need to be pruned so that they can grow more. When someone reprimands you, if somebody gives you a positive, constructive criticism, what they're doing is they're pruning you. They're trying to help you so that you can grow and that you can get better. So we got to not buck against the things when someone's trying to give us a, a, a constructive criticism, but listen and give an attentive ear to what they're saying because there's some wisdom to what's being said. Let's go on to our next scripture, James 1 and 22. I'm almost done. James 1 and 22 says, But prove yourselves, doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts, and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. Deluding yourselves, that means deceiving yourselves, by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. Oh, this is one of my favorite. Don't you know those people that say, oh, Pastor Priest, different day. Oh, but she wasn't talking to me. Mm -hmm. Who she was talking about, so and so, they should have been here because she was all up and down reading them. They should have been here because she was talking all about their business. They should have been here so they could have gotten in behind rebuke and mm -hmm. got in line. Oh, she wasn't talking to me. Oh, that was a good word. Then they get on the phone, child, Pastor Priest, that day. Oh, you should have been there. She was talking to you and you missed it. Mm -hmm. You had an opportunity to get your life together. Boom, but you missed it because you wasn't there. Oh, we all know folk like that. You hear the word, but you refuse to internalize it because you say, that's not for me. Oh, I know she talking good, or I know he talking good, but that what she's saying, uh-uh, boo, that's not for me. That's for somebody else. I don't need to change. I'm good. As I said before, God, you can have this, but this over here, I'm going to hold this right here for a million dollars. I'm not ready to release that to God. You know, I'm going to give him part of me, but I'm not quite give him, ready to give him all of me yet. You know, I, I'm just, you know, a work in progress, praise uh -huh. God, you know. But I'm not what I used to be, praise God. You know, I've changed a lot. But God is trying to get you to change. Yeah. God is trying to convict your heart. God is trying to tell you this is an area that I want you to improve in. I want you to take this word and internalize it, and I want you to change. Yeah. Because the state that you're in, the Bible says, I'd rather you be cold or hot than if you're lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And the state that we're in when we habitually walk in sin and the Holy Spirit keeps trying to convict us and internalize what it is that we need to change. And we keep saying, oh, oh God, I'm not ready. Oh, God, ooh, um, God, back up. Give me a moment. I'm not ready. What? So you want to stay lukewarm. You want to keep deceiving yourself into believing that you've already arrived at the location of which you think you're supposed to be. Because, boo, you already got it clean going on. You're deceiving yourself. It's called self-deception. Let me go to my last scripture. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of the arrogant fool who rejects God's wisdom is right in his own eyes, but a wise and prudent man is he who listens to counsel. Now, how many times have y'all seen these interventions where people come together to collectively tell an individual that your actions, your behavior is self-destructive? And so many people are saying the same thing, yet the person says, I don't know what y'all talking about, because that's not me. I don't know, y'all tripping, that, that's not me. Y'all, y'all, see, y'all misunderstand. Y'all just don't know me, you know, because if you knew my heart and you knew who I was, y'all wouldn't be coming at me like that, because that's not me. That's a fool. The Bible says that's an arrogant fool, because they're rejecting God's wisdom. I want you to think about it. How many relationships have you been in and the individual keeps saying the same thing about you? Boom, you the common denominator. But yet, it ain't you, it's them. That's why I'm still single, because them, because they, because them, everybody but me. <laughs> A fool 
despises wisdom. A fool is one that does not listen to counsel. When someone generally cares about you and they really love you, and you know in your heart that that person doesn't mean you any harm, why would you think that when they come and they tell you about your characteristic flaw, that they're doing it because they hate you on them? <coughs> That's the devil. That's the enemy that wants you to think, oh, poop, what they saying is a lie. They hate you on me. Because you know, because I'm, you know. Yes. No, boo. You need to change. You are walking in self-deception. You have deceived your own self into believing that you're somewhere that you're not. Everybody around you can see the truth. And actually, honestly, if you really stop and think for a moment, you see it too. You just don't want to acknowledge it. But you're deceiving yourself. And you will never be who God wants you to be, walking in self-deception. You will never reach your fullest potential in life and be the best person you could possibly be lying to yourself. Because yes. at the end of the day, when nobody else is around, it's you and God. Yes. Who are you lying to? Yes. He already knows. Yes. You're lying to you. So you got to really think about it today. <laughs> Do you want to continue to walk in self-deception -de and continue to self-destruct? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to give it all to God and say, you know what, God, look, I yield. It hurts, but I yield. I, I don't like the way this feels, but I yield. Even thinking about it makes me cry, but I yield. Because I want to be right at the end of the day. I want to be whole inside and out. I'm tired of walking around a big mess, a bomb just waiting to blow up. Because internally, I'm hurting so bad, but I'm not internalizing the truth about me. I'm just looking at a facade, this fantasy of me. Self-deception. I hope, I hope you're listening tonight. I, I hope with everything in me that, that, that you look past the fact that you don't even know me and just understand that this is not me speaking. This is God speaking directly to your spirit, man, that baby, I just want you to change. I just want all of you. I want the real you, not the you you're portraying, but the real you. And tonight you can make a change. Tonight you can walk out here and be true to who you are and not the deceptive individual that you pretend to be. It's tight, but it's right. Self-deception is really hurting you, not the people that you're pretending in front of. You're the one that's hurting. You're smiling on the outside and you're beautiful. You got your makeup on, baby, you're beat. <laughs> you know, the face is beat to the gods. <laughs> but your heart is crushed because you're deceiving yourself. You can dress this up. You know, I try to put on some things so you can't see all the fat layers of fat. But the reality is, it's still under there. My fat is it, still there. I got on the girl who I'm trying to put the thing in. Right. But the fat is still there. Hear me tonight. The fat is still there. No matter what you put on to cover up, it's still there. Stop walking around deceiving yourself, boo. Everybody see it. I don't care how many girls I put on, boo. You see these rolls. I ain't shame. You see them? I see the rolls. You see the rolls, right? I ain't shame. It's there. And what I'm trying to help you understand is that no matter what you do to cover up, they still see it. People still see it. God sees it. And the reality is, you see it. Now what you gonna do with that? Self-deception. Don't self-destruct trying to be something you wasn't created to be. Just be free in who you are, flaws and all. Just stand tall in who you are flaws and all. And let God work a wonderful masterpiece out of what 
is there, not what you're trying to create that's never meant to be. Self-deception, amen? Amen. 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 I'm I know that all things are working for my good, yeah, she's intentional.